Now, Israel's war cabinet has decided to hit back against Iran for its missile and drone attack on Saturday night. Netanyahu summoned his war cabinet for the second time in less than 24 hours. Israel's military chief said that his country will respond to Iran's weekend attack, but he did not elaborate on when and how. Israel has reassured Arab countries in the region that its response to Iran's attack will not place them in danger. We are closely assessing the situation. We remain at our highest level of readiness. Iran will face the consequences for its actions. We will choose our response accordingly. The IDF remains ready to counter any threat from Iran and its terror proxies as we continue our mission to defend the state of Israel. The Israeli military released more footage claiming to show the damage which one of the air bases suffered in Iran's largely thwarted weekend aerial attack. Israeli officials have said that the repairs at the base are ongoing and that the site remains operational throughout. Israel remained on high alert, but authorities lifted some emergency measures that had included a ban on some school activities and limits on large gatherings. The White House has also said that Iran did not provide warnings to the United States last week about its time frame for launching an attack on Israel or its potential targets. I've seen reporting that the Iranians meant to fail. That this spectacular and embarrassing failure was all by design. I've also seen uh, Iran say that they provided early warning to help Israel prepare its defenses and limit any potential damage. All of this is categorically false. To coin the phrase from the president, or still a phrase from the president, it's malarkey. Earlier, Turkish, Jordanian and Iraqi officials said that Iran did give wide notice days before its drone and missile attack on Israel. And now the head of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps has warned that Iran would respond to future Israeli attacks on Iran-linked targets. Meanwhile, the United Nations nuclear watchdog chief said that Iran has closed nuclear facilities in wake of Israeli attack. Earlier, he said that he is concerned about possible Israeli targeting of Iranian nuclear facilities. Are you concerned that the, some of the targets might be uh, nuclear facilities in Iran, especially that IAEA inspectors are on the ground, if you still can, and if you can confirm that, actually? Well, of course, uh, um, we are always concerned about this, this possibility. What I can tell you is that um, uh, our inspectors uh, in Iran were informed by the Iranian government that on the uh, yesterday, uh, all the uh, nuclear facilities that we are uh, inspecting every day would remain closed uh, on security considerations. They would be reopened today for the continued uh, inspections. The IAEA regularly inspects Iran's main nuclear facilities, like its enrichment plants at Natanz, that are at the heart of the country's nuclear program. For more on this, we now have with us Elit Burrell, former director at Israel's National Security Council, joining us on this bulletin live from Tel Aviv. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. I want to begin by asking you, at a time when there's growing international pressure as well as pressure from within to rein in the operations in the region and also de-escalate tensions in West Asia, do you think Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu would be willing to go ahead with a response to Iran's attacks and go ahead alone, in fact, because the United States has said that the fact that the attack was largely thwarted, that was response enough. Well, what we are hearing is that um, all options for retaliation are currently being considered and are on the table. Um, needless to say, it would be a more complicated situation because of the message from the United States, but also because of the question of legitimacy and support um, from within, and particularly because uh, the main goal for the continuation of hostilities and a war effort on the Israeli side are seen in the public, I think, would be the return of the hostages. And it's unclear how at this time 
such an action would promote that rather than divert resources. Having said that, is it also quite logical that the War Cabinet is considering um, retaliation? Because as you all saw on April 14th in the early morning hours, um, Israel was comprehensively attacked um, in, in a way that no country has ever been attacked before. And um, there's a question here of sovereignty and um, of what uh, deterrence and retaliation look like. So obviously a lot of um, issues to consider. Right. Uh, personally, I would stress that um, um, I think the War Cabinet is quite aware of the fact that the Iranian attack had failed miserably, it's true, and that this form of effective defense that Israel and its supporters have put up uh, effectively amounts to deterrence by denial. Iran was not able to achieve its goals, and I think mm -hmm. all of its proxy and everybody who was watching understands that uh, effective defense is deterrence as well. So um, we have an issue here where I think um, Israel should very, very carefully craft what its response uh, should be hmm. considering its interests. Right, absolutely. In fact, I was just going to come to this next, as you said as well, that is the wide consensus on this, that the fact that it was largely thwarted was a response enough. You spoke about resources as well, and that was my next question. Do you think if Israel does go ahead with a retaliatory strike or does have a plan for retaliation, it can go ahead and sustain that fight alone with Iran? Well, let me be clear. Retaliation can take various forms. Israel has um, no shortage of means, ranging from cyber through kinetic through any other means. Um, and also Iran it provides for a very target-rich environment. It's not just necessarily um, striking at Iran itself. It has so many assets throughout the region, um, very high-value assets, such as the general um, who was uh, taken out supposedly by Israel in Damascus. Um, he's not the only one. I mean, the Iranian attempts to uh, base their power, both in Syria and Lebanon and Yemen, like throughout the region, uh, does supply a very wide range of um, high value targets. So what we have here is a very uh, rich menu of retaliation options. Um, some of them, you know, would not necessarily carry out a huge um, conflict or deterioration, but the truth is that you never know in war what will cause escalation. Um, I don't think Israel particularly wants to go it alone, but Israel can't go it, can do it. It can't take it the fight on by mm -hmm. itself. The question is always what interests are being served. And I go back to the point where building deterrence is not something that is done in one strike or a point of retaliation. The kind of demonstration of Israeli defense capabilities that the world has never seen before. Um, we, everybody knew we had them, but now we've demonstrated how effective they are. Um, hmm. Actually, constitutes a very strong form of det deterrence as well. All so, right. um, according to our interests, nothing else. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on We On World Is One with your insights on this. Thank you. For latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.